Today's Read Aloud is titled, Four Seasons in One Year. In our last Read Aloud, we talked about the names of these seasons. Do you remember the names of these four seasons? We also talked about hemispheres. Remember, a hemisphere is a half of the Earth, and you live in the Northern Hemisphere. Here's something else to think about. Have you ever noticed how the length of your shadow changes at different times of the day? Have you noticed that your midday shadow is shorter than your morning shadow? Take some time to discuss why you think that might be. Here are some vocabulary words in our read aloud today. The first word is absorbed. Something that has been taken in and soaked up. The next word is migrate. To move from one area to another based on the seasons. And the last word is photosynthesis. The process in green plants that uses light to turn water and air into food when the plant is exposed to sunlight. Listen carefully to find out the main topic of today's Read Aloud. Pay attention to the effect intense sunlight has on all living things. Let's begin. Do you know why many plants grow more rapidly during the summer and more slowly or not at all during the winter? Or why some animals migrate, whereas others hibernate? Only certain parts of our planet have seasons. This is because of the shape and tilt of Earth. The region around the equator receives the greatest amount of direct intense sunlight. This region of Earth is called a tropical region because it is almost always hot and humid. The North and South Poles receive the least amount of direct sunlight. They are the polar regions of Earth. Generally, they remain cold and dry. In recent years, however, as Earth's overall climate has changed and has become warmer, the polar regions are warming up too, and some of the ice caps in this region have been melting. The region between the poles on either side of the equator is called the temperate region. In this region of the world where we live, most places experience all four seasons of the year. Remember, during the time of year when the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, this part of our world receives more daylight and more intense sunlight. This means it is summertime in the northern hemisphere. At the same time, the southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, so it is winter there. That's why, as Earth revolves around the sun and is tilted on an axis, the seasons change. Now, let's discover more information about each specific season. As each year passes in the temperate region of the world, changes occur in the weather. These weather cycles have been divided up into what we call the seasons. Each season brings with it incredible changes in the world around us. In spring, daylight hours increase and the sunlight becomes much stronger. With warmer weather, more rain begins to fall. With increased light, warmth, and rain, plants begin to grow again. Seeds resting in the soil begin to take root. The warmth from the sun and the rainfall enables plant seeds to germinate or begin to grow into plants. You have probably heard the saying, April showers bring May flowers. New plants emerge and plants that have been inactive for the winter become active and start growing again. As buds and leaves form, water absorbed or taken in by the plant travels up the stem to the leaves. Plants use water and sunlight to make their own food as well as oxygen for us to breathe. This process is called photosynthesis. 
It is during springtime that this great burst of life and energy occurs. Springtime also sees the return of animals that have migrated or moved to warmer places during the wintertime. It is also the time when some animals wake up from their winter hibernation. Spring is when many animals give birth to their young. Animals give birth either by bearing live young or by laying eggs. Animals that give birth to live young have nourished their young inside their bodies. Animals that hatch from eggs have been nourished by a yolk within the egg. Because the Northern Hemisphere receives more intense sunlight from the sun and a more direct angle in the summer, temperatures are usually at their highest during these months. With the increase of light and heat in the summer, plants grow big and strong. Young animals are born and grow strong during this fruitful time as well. As the earth revolves and summer turns to autumn, both the temperature and the environment begin to change again. In autumn, while it is still warm, light from the sun is not as intense and the growth and development of plants and animals begins to slow down. In many places in the Northern Hemisphere, autumn is a time to harvest the crops that have grown and ripened beneath the summer sun. Grass crops are harvested and grapes are picked from the vines. Fruits such as apples, pears, and pumpkins are ready to be eaten. As the amount of daylight lessens and the temperature continues to drop, the leaves of many trees change color. During this time in many parts of the Northern Hemisphere, a world of copper, bronze, red, and orange leaves is a sight to behold. Leaves change color in autumn because deciduous trees receive less sunshine than they need to produce food and photosynthesis stops. When photosynthesis stops, these leaves begin to die and fall off. Therefore, deciduous trees are trees that have leaves that change color and fall off. When winter arrives, it means that this part of earth is now tilted away from the sun and temperatures and sunlight are at a minimum. It also means that summer has arrived in the Southern Hemisphere. Because conditions are less favorable for living things in winter, growth and development slows down and even stops. During winter, deciduous trees rely on the food they previously produced and converted into energy. This food supply is stored in their roots. During winter, deciduous trees as well as many other plants, enter a dormant state. In winter, some animals whose food source is affected by the change in climate migrate or leave for warmer places. These animals sense the change in daylight and temperature and begin their annual migration. Migration is part of a yearly cycle of changes. Some birds, for example, travel long distances to their winter homes. They prepare for their migration by eating lots of food they can store as energy to use on their journey. Mammals such as caribou and elk migrate across the vast expanses of land and even fish migrate in winter in search of warmth and food. Like many plants that lay dormant in winter, the, there are animals that hibernate. Hibernation is a kind of deep sleep. Like the deciduous trees, animals that hibernate rely on the food they have stored in their bodies to get them through the winter months. There are also animals that stay in their natural habitat through the colder months and survive as best they can. Animals such as foxes, deer, and rabbits search for food on the frozen land. Some build snug homes to keep out of the cold. They have learned to adapt or adjust to their ever-changing environment. People adapt too. They prepare for the cold months ahead by wearing warmer clothes and even changing the foods they eat. How do you prepare for autumn and winter? We are all part of this never-ending cycle. 
When spring returns, the cycle of growth will begin all over again and new life will appear on the earth. Here are some discussion questions. Feel free to pause the video in order to allow time to think and discuss. What is the main topic of today's read aloud? Why do plants grow more rapidly during the summertime than during other seasons? Why do only some parts of our planet have seasons? If it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere, what season is it in the Southern Hemisphere? Why do some animals migrate south in the fall and return north in the spring? In which season do most animals give birth to their young? In which season are many crops harvested? Why do some trees shed their leaves? How do people adapt to winter and summer?